Greetings, everyone, and welcome to ASMR Gaming News. Please hit that like button, sit back, relax, and let's begin. So, first piece of news is for Nintendo. And there's been a very big Nintendo rumor going around this week. Uh, people within the gaming industry have uh, stated that this rumor is true, but there has been no official confirmation by Nintendo as of uh, right now. So take all of this with a grain of salt. It could just be, you know, completely false. But according to these rumors, Nintendo is planning on releasing two new Nintendo Switch models later this year. So, as you all know, the Nintendo Switch came out a few years ago. A very, very popular system for Nintendo. And now they're going to be releasing two new versions of the Switch. An upgraded model with new features, possibly a better screen, uh, maybe another button, who knows, it's going to have new features according to this rumor. But, they are also going to be releasing another Switch model, and this one is going to be like a light budget version of the Switch. So, it's not going to have all the features that the current Switch has. Apparently, it's going to be much smaller possibly not have detachable Joy-Cons and stuff like that. And I guess it's going to be like a budget marketed version of the Switch, you know, towards people that can't really afford the more expensive model. And I guess they want more people to start buying the Nintendo Switch systems. Uh, they did the exact same thing with the DS when the DS Lite came out and with the 3DS uh, when the new 3DS came out. So. I guess they're trying out the same formula with the Nintendo Switch this time, so... Yeah, a lot of people are excited, you know, to see what Nintendo has to announce later this year. According to this rumor, these systems are coming out sometime in the summertime. Or at least, they're going to be announced in the summer. So, uh, yeah, we don't have any official news from Nintendo yet. But all we have is uh, leaks from people within the gaming industry that are saying there is a new system in development and that it'll be revealed shortly. So hopefully that's true. And I can't wait to see what these new Nintendo Switch models look like. And next we have Persona 5. So, as you all know, uh, Persona 5 was an RPG that came out a few years ago. Uh, Joker, the main character from Persona 5, is going to be appearing in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on the Nintendo Switch. So a lot of people started speculating that this means a port of Persona 5 would be coming to the Switch. And shortly after, uh, Persona 5 R was announced. So, this week we got a teaser trailer for Persona 5 R, and it has not been confirmed for a Nintendo Switch release as of right now. Uh, so far, it's only been confirmed for the PlayStation 4, but lots of people are saying that it's probably going to happen very soon. There's going to be a Nintendo Direct of some kind where they are going to announce uh, this new Persona 5 R game for the Switch. And what this new version has is, uh, it's called Persona 5 Royal, but it's going to be an enhanced version of Persona 5. All we have to go right now is the trailer, so not a lot of information has been released yet. Uh, in this new teaser trailer, they show off a brand new character, a female character. We do not know her name. And a lot of Persona fans are speculating that she might be the main character for Persona 5R. Maybe they're switching it up so you can choose either the main 
like male character or choose this female character to be your main character instead and have like a different side story mode of some kind so hopefully atlas reveals more about this soon can't wait to see if this game is coming to the switch or not but people are excited and they said that they will have some more news uh, sometime at the end of like April once they do a live stream so can't wait to see what they show off so we have another crazy rumor this week apparently George R.R. Martin the writer behind the Game of Thrones books which spawned the extremely popular Game of Thrones TV series. Apparently, he is working with From Software, the developers of Bloodborne, Dark Souls, uh, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice Now, to make a brand new game. So a lot of people are excited. Uh, people are saying this is completely fake. This can't be true, but... According to sources, uh, this is actually happening, uh, but nothing's been confirmed yet, so I just want to put that out there. Nothing has been confirmed, but both Game of Thrones fans and Dark Souls fans are extremely vocal about their opinions on this collab right now. I've seen a lot of very positive uh, posts about this online. People think that the Game of Thrones, like, universe style of, like, writing would, would fit in perfectly with, like, a Dark Souls kind of world for a video game. So, imagine if they collabed on making some kind of game together. That would be great. Uh, hopefully it's true and it actually happens, but, yeah, nothing's been confirmed yet. This is just a rumor, but... If they actually work together, that would be amazing. It, it wouldn't be the first time that, you know, someone that writes books collabs with a video game company for a, like, video game story and kind of, like, world building off their creative writing. And I just think it's a really good, like, relationship if it actually happens. So hopefully we get some announcements at E3 or next year about this. I'm not sure. Next, Borderlands 3 has been officially announced. So yeah, there was a reveal trailer and everything. Lots of Borderlands news this week, by the way. Uh, they announced, like, updates for previous Borderlands games, like the Borderlands Collection. Uh, the first Borderlands game is getting, like, an enhanced Game of the Year edition for modern systems. Uh, Borderlands VR is coming out, stuff like that, so lots and lots of good things if you're a fan of Borderlands. But most of all, Borderlands 3 finally got announced, and I highly recommend checking it out. I have never really been a Borderlands, like, player. I've only played a little bit of the first game. I was thinking of purchasing a, a port of Borderlands 2, never got around to it, but I have friends that are really, really big into the series. They've pl played the games for hundreds of hours. Apparently, the multiplayer is a lot of fun, which is one of the main reasons why everyone plays the game. So, I'm sure Borderlands fans are extremely happy right now about the new Borderlands 3 uh, reveal trailer. Lots of stuff was shown off. Uh, all I can say is the graphics look extremely nice. I like the art style. It, it feels really, really unique. Like, not a lot of the games have this art style. And yeah, it's coming out for everything, basically. It's coming out on PS4, PC, Xbox One. So everyone will be able to play this game once it releases. And yeah, looks looks really nice. So check out the trailer if you haven't seen it yet. So next, we have some kind of sad news, I guess. Uh, former Sony PlayStation like president Kaz Hirai announces his retirement uh, from the company. So last year, he announced that he would be stepping down from his position. So a lot of people were wondering if he was going to retire or not. 
and I guess a year's passed now. You know, it's been one year since he announced he was stepping down, and now he is officially retiring, so a lot of PlayStation fans are a little bit disappointed to see him go. He's been the face of the company for a very long time. Fans were always happy, you know, to hear from him in interviews, speaking about PlayStation. There are a lot of memes about him online. So, uh, one of his more famous ones is probably when he said Ridge Racer, Ridge Racer during a PlayStation E3 uh, press conference uh, back in like 2006 or 7. Honestly, it's been a very long time. I can't remember exactly. I I'd have to go back and check. But yeah, he he over the years, he he has so many memes that were created from like stuff he's said during interviews or appearances for the longest time there was even or maybe it's even still up on twitter but there's a a fake cause Hirai ceo account that actually gets like retweeted multiple times over the years and lots of funny posts and things so people have always like loved him as you know ceo of playstation so yeah, it's disappointing to see him go. It, it seems like a lot of the big, like, important people uh, in, you know, gaming right now are retiring. Uh, Reggie fils from Nintendo is retiring from his position. And Kazurai is next. So, yeah, it just seems like a lot of the big people that, that have been part of the industry for years now are stepping down. So, it's sad to see them go. But on the other hand, they, they've been working hard for many years, so it's nice that they're going to have time to, you know, to rest, uh, spend time with their families and stuff like that now. So uh, good luck to Kazurai. Wish him the best. And thank you for all the years you put in uh, at PlayStation. It really, really meant a lot. Next, we have news about Death Stranding. So... Hideo Kojima this week came out to say that Death Stranding uh, is a game that he plays every single day. So he, he's playing the game every day on PlayStation 4, he said, and the game is a little bit behind schedule. Right now they want to move things a little forward a little bit since they're behind as of right now. And he also mentioned that the game is in the critical phase of development. So what this means is I guess they're nearing the end of the development cycle for the game. So hopefully this means that sometime this year we're going to get a release date announcement and the new trailer or something. I have high hopes for E3 so can't wait to see what they show off. Hopefully it's something good. I'm, I'm not sure uh, where they're going to announce this. Uh, maybe maybe they're going to do it at PlayStation Experience later this year, but either way, they're probably going to have a great announcement for Death Stranding, and I'm predicting it's going to be a cross-generation game appearing on the PlayStation 4 and probably on the PlayStation 5 whenever that gets announced. So... Can't wait to hear more about the game from Hideo Kojima once it's ready to be shown off. Next, No Man's Sky. So the Beyond update got uh, shown off during a PlayStation live stream uh, for the State of Play. It was like a live stream conference uh, where they showed off a bunch of VR games, a lot of virtual reality games for the PlayStation VR. And the new Beyond update that was uh, announced a while ago for No Man's Sky was shown off at this like event. And Beyond is an update for No Man's Sky which adds a VR mode to the entire game. So you're going to be able to play No Man's Sky in VR. And it looks amazing. Like, wow. They, the developers for No Man's Sky, they're really putting in work. Like, they're, they're constantly updating this game, adding more and more content. And right now, it's just, wow, they, they put in so much, like, work into 
this game to make it something special, so go check out the No Man's Sky Beyond trailer. It's crazy to think that you can play the whole thing in VR, and a lot of fans, I've been checking the No Man's Sky forums like I do every once in a while, and there are just so many positive comments like all over the place from fans of the game, people actually considering picking up PlayStation VR just to play this, so yeah, definitely uh, good on the developers for doing this, and I actually want to go back in and play some No Man's Sky now, even even though I don't have the VR. Uh, the VR update, by the way, is coming out in August, so a few months away. It's not coming out this month or next month. So next, we have some uh, very sad news. Apparently, EA is laying off over 350 people out of like 9,000 jobs. Uh, they fired like 350 people that had various positions at the company, you know, in game development, stuff like that. Uh, according to some journalists, people that know what's going on, uh, EA is laying off a bunch of people uh, due to, due to uh, cuts, and because they aren't satisfied with uh, the performance of some of their games, like Anthem, and yeah, it just doesn't seem right. Uh, a lot of people are kind of sad about this. Uh, you have other game companies, you know, developers reaching out to their colleagues that have been recently laid off, according to this uh, article here. But yeah, it's just, wow, EA. I mean, EA does stuff like this all the time. They've been doing this for years now. But it, it's always sad to see, um, you know, games underperform. And the company decides to fire, you know, like, 10 people from this division, 20 people from this other division, stuff like that. And for some reason, it always seems like it comes back to ruin future plans. When a game comes out and it doesn't sell well, you know, they fire, like, half the team. And then, a few years later, they want to create a brand new game, and then they think, like, hey, let's get the exact same team together, we can try to do that again, but better. And then they realize that they fired half the staff years ago, and they all have different jobs now. So, you know, they wish they had that talent, but they don't anymore, so... Yeah, it's just kind of weird, uh, it feels bad too, because lots of these people, you know, they had families and jobs working at the company for years, probably. To just be laid off suddenly is, is not a fun feeling, so, yeah, uh, not a good situation, so a lot of people have been talking about this this week, and, yeah, it, I guess it's just EA being EA again, you know, uh, they're kind of known for being, uh, bad in the industry, even even if they try to act like they're not, they always kind of do stuff like this, so it is kind of disappointing to see people lose their jobs like this. Next, Streets of Rage 4 got a brand new gameplay teaser trailer that came out this week. It's kind of a big reveal for a lot of fans. Uh, I love the Streets of Rage series, so I was excited about this. And honestly, the gameplay looks quite nice. I wasn't sure at first about the art style, but after watching this trailer, uh, I'm really excited for the game now. I think that it looks nice. The gameplay looks like a lot of fun. And the music, the music is probably the best thing about the trailer. It's like a cool remixed version of the classic style of Streets of Rage music and sounds. So honestly, I'm excited for this game now. I, I really want to try it out and see how it plays and feels compared to the older games in the series, and I really enjoy beat-em-ups, so hopefully this is a good one. Uh, check out the trailer if you haven't seen it yet. So, Bethesda this week confirmed that Wolfenstein Youngblood would be coming to the Nintendo Switch in July. And that panic button was in charge of the port for the Switch version of the game. Uh, panic button has also worked on Doom and Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, so they know what they're doing. This port is probably going to be really good. And yeah, honestly, it's great that Bethesda.
Bethesda is continuing to support the Switch. I absolutely love that they're doing that. And hopefully more game companies try to follow in their footsteps, you know. They're setting an example for a lot of other third-party developers, so that's always a good thing, and I'm sure Nintendo is happy about this, too. Lastly, this really cool game called Cyber Shadow is coming out on everything, uh, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. It's a old-school platforming ninja game, very similar to, like, Ninja Gaiden and a bunch of other games in that style. Looks really, really cool. Apparently, Yacht Club Games, uh, the developers behind Shovel Knight, which I'm sure a lot of you know about. It's basically one of the most popular indie games of all time. Really, really good game, by the way. Uh, the developers behind that game are publishing this game. Uh, they did not develop it, they're just publishing it. But it looks amazing. The music is great. There's a trailer you can check out. Uh, at first, I wasn't convinced about the game, so I checked out the trailer. And after the trailer was over, I really felt the urge to go buy the game just because of how cool the trailer was. So if you like ninjas, you like platforming action from the, like, NES era, old school style, definitely check out this game called Cyber Shadow. And yeah, that is all the news for this week, so... I hope you all enjoyed listening or watching this video. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel on Patreon so we can make more videos like this on the channel, uh, you can go over to patreon.com slash ASMRgaming, where with as little as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you all next time. So long.